magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together because our God is an amazing God and is worthy to be praised. We are glad that you are joining us this morning in this virtual space to worship and praise and glorify our almighty God. As we continue to lift up the name of Jesus, I want you to lift up your voices and sing with us this opening hymn. Amen. We do serve an awesome and a mighty God who is worthy of all praise and glory. As we continue to posture our hearts and as we continue to focus ourselves and center ourselves on to God, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Join me as we pray. God, you are the breath that we breathe. You are the reason that we are able to open up our eyes in the morning, to have activity of our limbs. God, to even be able to speak and to think, oh God, you are the source of all that we need. So God, today we just want to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your overflowing uh, blessings that you have caused to come into our lives and how you love us so good. Your unconditional love heals us in ways that we don't even imagine, oh God. Your spirit leads and guides our steps in ways, oh God, that covers us from danger seen and unseen and moves us into the very essence of our gifting and our call. God, we just came by to say thank you. There are not enough words to express the gratitude that we feel in our hearts this morning, oh Lord. But we will try to praise your name and so that you will be glorified in all that we say and all that we do. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching over us during these days. Thank you, oh God, for comforting us in the midst of our sorrow. Thank you, oh God, for providing all of our needs according to your riches and glory, God. Thank you for keeping our minds in perfect peace as we kept them stayed on you. Oh God, we just came to say thank you. There's a thank you praise that lifts up from our spirits, oh God and helps us to see your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. So God, we center ourselves on your thanksgiving according to your word, according to your grace, and according to your mercy. So God, as we worship you in this place, we ask that you would open our hearts, open our spirits to see your faithfulness towards us. So God, great is your faithfulness. And, oh, God, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to see and to feel your word that is spoken in this place, that is sung in our homes and through this virtual stream, oh, God, that we would forever be changed by a touch from you. We know that your spirit is with us right now. We know that your spirit is ministering to us. So, God, this is our prayer. This is our offering of thanksgiving. 
And this is our petition for you to do what you do and move how you move and bring us closer to you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time to give God all praise and glory. And yes, I did say the house of the Lord, and that means the sanctuary, your home, your car, wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is sanctuary. There is an opportunity to worship and praise almighty God. We are glad that you have joined us this morning on Facebook and on YouTube and that you are saying yes to God every day of your life as you praise God, as you praise God in your car, as you praise God on your workplace, as you praise God and worship the Lord, even in the grocery store. We are witnesses to the power and the grace and the mercy of an almighty God. So this morning, we just welcome you, all of our visitors, all of our members, all of our first-time visitors, to worship the Lord with us. There are many things going on in the life of C.N. Jenkins, and we always tell you this every Sunday morning, to stay connected with us, because God is on the move within our congregation, and we want you to participate in all that God is doing in this space. So join us and look on our website also on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and stay connected with the many things that are going on in the life of this congregation. At this time, it is offering time, and we celebrate, and we are excited about all that God continues to bless us with. If you look around, just take a minute to look around in your home and all the things that you have. And just close your eyes and think about the blessings that God has given you 
you maybe you can think back over your life and think about how good God has been. And this is your opportunity just to say thank you to the Lord by giving back a portion of what God has given you to be a blessing to someone else. The scripture tells us that we are more blessed to give than to receive. We give of our time, of our talents, and of our treasure. And this is a time you can give a portion of your treasure so that you can be a blessing. So as we prepare to give, and you see the many ways you can give on the screen, hold up your devices as we pray before we give to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we offer you these humble gifts. They are signs of your goodness and your mercy. Receive them with our gratitude that through us all people may know the riches of your love in the word made flesh. May the offering and generosity of our lives be a blessing in this world. And may you be glorified in all that we say, do, and give. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thanks be to God. Let us give to the Lord.
Amen. What a song of affirmation, what a song of praise. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Please join us now as we pray, asking God to continue to be with us in our service and praying that the Holy Spirit will do what it is called to do, which is draw us closer to our Savior. Eternal God, our Creator, thank you so much for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. Thank you, God, for the prayers that have been lifted up. And thank you, God, most importantly, for the, the praises that have been offered to you. Speak now that your servants may hear. Move in a mighty way that all of those who are viewing this service will be connected to you and their lives, God, will be enhanced by your preached word. God, we pray now that the meditation of all of our hearts, we pray, God, that the words spoken at this portion of our service will bring you honor and glory. We recognize, God, we can't do anything without you, but with you, God, all things are possible. So have your way, we pray, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let your church say, Amen. Amen, my friends. To God be the glory of great things God has done on this Sabbath day, this third Sunday in May. Giving God thanks for all that we experienced on last week. And those who had their Mother's Day celebration, we are so grateful of you now joining us once again in this house of worship. Thank you, Pastor Lanson, for your words of prayer and inspiration. Thank you, Dr. Monroe, and for the choir for singing. As we say, the horns off the billy goat. We're so grateful for how you helped us uh, usher the spirit of worship in this space. To our AV team, to our, our centurions, those who make this a safe place to worship here at CN Jenkins, I'm in be grateful for all of your ministry. Today, if you have your word, we invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 13. I want to read to you verses 1 through 5 from the New Living Translation of our Holy Writ. John chapter 13, reading verses 1 through 5. Let us hear the word of Almighty God. Now, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for today's preaching moment, I invite you to hear verses 4 and 5 of this pericope once again. For the Bible tells us these are the instructions. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. My friends, for a brief moment on this Sabbath day, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement, I want to lift up this text and continue our series of sermons around the five love languages. And today, preach installment number four, Acts of Service, with this sermon title in mind, Actions Speak Louder Than Words. Actions Speak Louder Than Words. My friends, when Michigan residents Kristen and Kyle got married in 2007, they did something that was out of the ordinary for their reception. Recognizing that it would cost an awful lot of money to have a sit-down plated dinner, they decided that they would estimate the cost of feeding 100 guests that is, with a plated dinner with a meat and vegetables and, and an hors d'oeuvre. That is, with having linen tablecloths and, and china. That is, with all of the trimmings of a nice plated reception. They estimated the cost, and they decided that instead of feeding their 100 guests at a plated dinner, they would, in essence, take the monies that they would spend on that reception and buy 5,000 pounds of food 
And this food would be distributed, y'all, at the day of their wedding to the homeless, to persons who did not have a meal. This couple, Kyle, y'all, and, and Christian, they wanted to do something as an act of service to Almighty God. And you do know that once they exchanged their nuptials and once they exchanged rings, the bride and groom donned on aprons, aprons that said bride and an apron that said groom. And they began to feed, y'all, more than 100 families this 5,000 pounds of food as an act of service to Almighty God. My friends, recognize what I'm saying here is that foregoing a set down plated dinner, the bride and groom wanted to give an act of service to Almighty God, thanking God for their blessings. And when asked about their charitable act of kindness, their happy couple simply said, we wanted to bless God for blessing each of us. Can I come get you this Sabbath day? Because I want you to hear on this Sunday morning and to share some good news as we preach on this subject. Action speaks louder than words because I believe God is calling somebody who is watching and somebody who is listening to start putting into action what God has placed upon your heart. I believe action speaks louder than words. It's not just a phrase, y'all, but it is a moniker of action action for somebody to put into movement. It is a phrase that we know, y'all, of a person's actions being more impactful than their words. To put it another way, instead of just talking about doing something, it's more meaningful for a person to actually practice what they preach. Am I talking to somebody on this Sabbath day? Because if I had to quote someone, let me lift up Benjamin Franklin, who said it this way, well done is a whole lot better than well said. Come on, put an amen right there in the chat box. How about Deshaun Stokes who says it like this? Talk about, talk Talk what uh, without the support of action means nothing. And, and Roy Goodwine even lays it out this way. Roy says, love is more than a word. Love is action. You see, action uh, speaks louder than words, y'all, is our theme for the day. But, but it is more important for us to connect it to the word of Almighty God. For what does the Bible tell us? It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he or she is like the person that looks themselves in the mirror pastor Lanson but in but, but for, for a short time forgets what they look like what or what does Luke's gospel say it says why do you call me Lord Lord and do not do what I tell you to do or I, I like the way Matthew's gospel says it it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father, the one who follows the word of Almighty God, the one who answers the call, you are indeed my children. Or as Paul says to the church at Colossae, he says, and so whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Will you help me thank God right there on this Sabbath day? Thank God that we serve a Lord and we serve a creator and we serve one who sits high and looks slow, but sits high and looks slow, but doesn't look over us in our service. I thank God that God gives us the energy and the power and the wherewithal to stand on his word. Look at what the Bible says, y'all, because when we see what the Bible says, says about service, in essence, it gives us a prescription to have this love language called act of service. And I don't want you to miss what I'm saying this Sunday morning, but the sermon title itself is nothing more than a shout out to somebody whose love tank may be a little low. You've been sitting in line trying to get some gasoline this week, but God sent you to church on this day to fill up your love tank with acts of service. You have been trying to wonder, how can I go on? How can they communicate and share love with me when my love language is act of service? And what does this love language act of service really mean? Well, generally speaking, y'all, 
love language act of service means this. It means doing things you know your partner would like for you to do. That's it. Basic and simple. Doing things that you know your partner would like for you to do. It requires thought. It requires planning. It requires time. It requires effort. And it requires energy. In, in, in essence, an act of service, y'all, it's anything you do that helps someone you love accomplish something. Now, come on, let's review a little bit because we've been preaching on these five love languages, languages that Dr. Gary Chapman has written in his book, The Five Love Languages. And if you have not taken the test, I invite you to do so because what it is is a measurement on how you emotionally connect to one another. It's not science. It's a movement of your emotions of how you fill up your love tank. And, and, and the love language to which we want to talk about. Well, first of all, what are love languages? Again, they are languages that the recipient, those that you are talking with and those that you are around of how they respond emotionally to your acts of kindness, your acts of service. Five love languages. What are they? Affirmation. That's yours. If you are an affirmation, just type a big capital A right there in the chat box. How about gifts? Okay, come on. Somebody put an emoji gift box in the chat box. That's yours. Act of service. That's where we're hanging out today. There's quality time and physical touch. These five languages, y'all, are part of how we communicate. And I want you to recognize recognize that they are connected to the scriptures. Act of service is what we're preaching on today, Dr. Monroe. And let me give an example of how this is lived out. The story is told that one day as Mother Teresa was taking care of a leper in the slums of India, an American tourist asked, could he take a picture of Mother Teresa? And as he took the photo, he watched Mother Teresa white wrap, wrap up the bandages with, around this leper, and he could not help himself, but he says, I don't see how in the world you are doing this. Matter of fact, Mother Teresa, I wouldn't do what you are doing for a million dollars. And at that time, Mother Teresa looked up at this American tourist and said, I wouldn't do it for a million dollars either. You see, why did Mother Teresa do this? Why did she reach out and take care of a leper? And in, in, why was she given this act of service? Well, it's all because of love. Her love language, y'all, was act of service. The way she communicated, the way she connected with those emotionally was through an act of service. And the Bible says that the one primary way that we show love to others is by serving them. You see, one of the five love languages is act of service. That is doing what others want done for them. That, that, that's what we're talking about on this Sunday morning. And come on with me to the 13th chapter of the book of John. This is where we pick up, Minister Donna, the passage that we're very familiar with, the passage that helps us understand the seriousness of following the Lord. Because you recognize that this is the night, the night when Jesus was betrayed, the night to which they broke bread, the night to which he was going to be arrested. Jesus in the shadow of the cross, y'all, takes some time, Brother L, to teach a valuable lesson about the heart of a servant. And I don't know who I'm speaking to this Sunday morning, but I want you to know that God wants to speak to your heart about being a committed servant. God wants to speak to your mind and your heart about doing more for the glory of the kingdom. Let me give it to you quickly and outline on three lessons to which Jesus teaches us the heart of a servant around act of service. Number one, it's about awareness. Number two, it's about activity. Number three, it's about aim. I've given you a triple A. That's what I did right there. Activity, aim, and excuse me, activity, uh, uh, awareness, and aim. Now, to start with awareness, notice what the text tells us in the first three verses of chapter 13. Jesus knew the time had come. 
Recognize this, y'all. When you are on part of active service, you have to know your surroundings. He, he knew something. He knew what? He knew the timing of the Father had come. That's verse number one. He knew the time for him to, his departure was to come. That's verse two. He also recognized he had a authority over everything. He was not a victim, but a victor. And here it is, number four, he knew that, that what was about to happen was in the heart of man. He knew that Judas would betray him. He knew that Peter would deny him. He knew that the disciples would go back to fishing and go back to their old job, even though they were part of the resurrection. The good news, y'all, is that when you are a part of an act of service, you understand the awareness of things around you. You understand that Jesus knew essentially what was going to happen. Now, what you're saying, Reverend, I'm saying that in order for us to practice this love language of act of service, we have to study to show thyself approved. A work person needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of Almighty God. When you understand that you have a purpose in your life, you will know why you must push through when you seem that you are falling on hard times. When you have knowledge about your calling, when you will understand, my friends, that you were made with value, then you know not to let somebody talk you down, put you down, keep you down, and kick you to. When you know you have value, y'all, you will understand your calling. Your calling is greater than man. Your calling is from Almighty God. And my friends, when God speaks something into your life, don't you let no woman or no man talk you out of doing what God has given you. When God gives you a vision, God will give the provision. When God God gives you a goal, God will give you the gift to fulfill that goal. The good news, y'all, we must understand that God is calling us to a level of knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Let me see if I can illustrate this to you in a way of knowing when you're doing the will of Almighty God, God has a way of sending somebody at the right time with the right gift. To help you fulfill your purpose. Come on, am I talking to somebody this Sunday morning? I want you to hear that again. When you are doing what God calls you to do, God knows what you're going through, but God also knows where you're going to. Come here, let me give you the story of Latanya Young. Latanya Young is a hairstylist who lives in Atlanta. Now, she picks up her hustle, y'all, is an Uber driver. And one night in particular, Latanya picked up a fair, y'all at the Mercedes-Benz uh, Arena down in Atlanta at the stadium, and she was taking this particular Uber passenger, y'all, to his destination. The Uber driver stuck up a conversation with the passenger, and they began to talk. The passenger asked Latanya, what is your goal? What's your aim? What's your, what's your desire? She says, well, I'm in school, but I had to drop out of school because I could not pay my tuition. You see, every time I tried to pay the bill, my children needed shoes or my children needed clothes or my children needed food. So I just said, hold up on my dreams. Let me work this Uber. Let me work my hair uh, stylist job and I will eventually get there. Now, track with me because I want you to hear Latanya's story. She was just sharing her story, her dream of where she wanted to go with this fair. She said she didn't have money to pay her tuition. She had a bill that was due. I'm talking to somebody this Sunday morning. She had a bill she could not pay. I'm speaking into somebody's life right now. She had more bills than she had bucks. She had more month than she had money. Now Latanya did not let her stop her from doing her job as a hairstylist or as an Uber driver. To her surprise, her pleasant surprise, she got a call from Georgia State University a week later announcing that she was now cleared to come back and take classes. Here is a shout, y'all. The shout comes from none other than Ken Ishe, Ken, excuse me, Kevin Ishe. Kevin Ishe said he heard Latanya's story and he said, I can either take my money and buy clothes, buy shoes, buy something for myself or I can sow it into somebody else. I can give an act of kindness. Okay, 
Kevin did not know who she was before he got in her car. But because God has a way of putting the right people at the right place at the right time to meet the right need, you missed your shout right there. God knows how to put the right people at the right place at the right time to meet the right need. And because God is in charge and God is orchestrating everything in our lives, my friends, we have to recognize that God blessed Latanya, but also God blessed Kevin. And and last December, y'all, when Latanya walked across the stage with her associate degree on her way to a bachelor's degree, on her way to say, my goal is to get a law degree, understand that Latanya now has a friend because of an act of service, an act of kindness. And somebody watching me this Sunday morning, you've got a Kevin in your life who you can give God thanks for. You've got a Latanya in your life to whom you have sold into their spirit. There is somebody right now that God has a way of connecting your resource to somebody who has a need. All the good news, the good news, my friend, is that when you recognize what God does in our lives, you will see the second lesson that God gives us here, and that is that Jesus taught that of activity. Can you say activity? Activity. Put a capital A right there in the chat box. Go ahead and put some kind of emoji that shows you have activity. For you see, verses 4 through 8 of chapter 13, uh, it tells us here, Miss Margaret, uh, that these are some verbs. These are some action words because it describes the movement in and around the disciples. The Bible tells us, y'all, that Jesus, he got up, he took off, he wrapped a towel, he washed the feet, he returned to his seat. Okay, you missed it. The Bible says, Miss Mitzi, here it is, that Jesus, he got up, he took off, he wrapped a towel, he washed the feet. He returned to his seat. All right, all right. You didn't shout, so let me prove to you that I used to go to Sunday school. So I'm going to say it like this. He got up from his throne in glory. He took off his robe of deity. He wrapped himself in the flesh of humanity. He washed away our sins with his blood. And then he returned through the resurrection to his heavenly throne. Now somebody ought to give God praise right there because you know as well as I do that God got up for your soul. He took off his robe for your glory. He wrapped his arms around you in love. He washed your sins away and he returned back to his seat. Y'all see what I'm saying when you get the, un get, get the facts back that Jesus recognized there's got to be some activity in the disciples. We just can't sit around and talk about God. We have to put our God into action. You see what I want you to understand and don't miss this point y'all is it the activity there's some excursion that there's some exertion shall we say of energy that Jesus teaches his disciples and a model for us to follow that if we're going to participate in this love language called act of service then we have to put some energy into it we just can't talk about it we've got to be about it this ministry at 1421 Statesville Avenue it's not a ministry where you drive by and you casually look over and see what's going on Oh, no, you pull your car in the parking lot. You get out of your car. You ask some questions. You roll up your sleeves. You get involved and you make a difference. This ministry is not located just here in Mecklenburg County. Through the World Wide Web, we are touching folk from California to, to Colorado. We're touching folk from Miami to Michigan. We're touching folk from San Diego to Seattle. Whatever it takes, we want to touch some souls with some act of service. Church, it's getting up time. Church is standing up time. Church is moving up time. Church is coming back time. Church is giving time. Church is shouting time. Church is praying time. Church is act of service time. Oh, hear what I'm saying this Sunday morning because I want you to know that, that Jesus is trying to say to us, my friends, it's in taking off the mask. That is to say, getting up from your rusty, dusty and doing something to make somebody's life better. That's an act of service. It's taking off the mask of pretense and letting folk know that you've been hurt, but God is your helper. Getting up time means it's walking in the steps of those in recovery and 
wrapping your arms around those who are being abused and let them know that God can make a difference in your life. It's cleansing our soul in the baptism and the return of the witness on the battlefield with a, with a vision and a voice and a commitment and a witness that God will answer our prayers. The good news, y'all, is that we must be as wise as serpents, as humble as ducks. Because Jesus teaches us a very valuable lesson here because the lesson that he teaches, my friends, is that you have to be careful. Be careful in your act of service of who you invite because you know Judas was right there. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, Andrew, James, John, Peter, and Judas. Okay, y'all getting holy on me. You're watching now. Jesus washed his betrayer's feet. Jesus washed his denial's feet. And don't you think that you are too holy that God's not going to go through you in your life for you to go back to the very hater, the very one who talks about you, who puts you out, who puts you down? Yes, God wants you to go to that person because it's only in humility that you can be lifted up. I got to share with you a tweet, a tweet from a college friend I saw, I saw and I, I called, I got permission to, to use the tweet because I didn't want to be like the professor in South Carolina that gave that, okay, anyway, I got to get permission, so I'm giving it Kim Howard. Kim Howard said, here's the tweet, everyone in your life is not, everyone in your life is not for your life. Involvement does not mean investment. Woo, that was pretty good. Everyone in your life is not for your life. Involvement does not mean investment. See, church, it is in the activity of Almighty God, even in the small stuff that if you keep on praying and keep on believing and keep on fasting and keep on encouraging, then, then you will see the power of Almighty God. Okay, okay, let me see if I can share with you a story of how to illustrate the small stuff in our lives and how it has a way of intersecting and impacting the process of the big stuff that happens to us. Come with me back to a winter day, Miss Nicole, back in the winter day of 1961 as a professor from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a meteorologist named Edward Lorenz. Edward Lorenz had run some routine experiences Experiments and found some unusual facts of his experiments. Dr. Lorenz discovered that that seemingly tiny insignificant changes in his data could produce huge differences in the final results. Miss Pam, here's what he said. At first, Dr. Lorenz and other scientists in the field of chaos theory, that is, they call this the sensitive dependence on initial data. That sounds like somebody from MIT, doesn't it? Okay, break it down like a fraction. In 1972, Dr. Lorenz changed that, and he simply called it the butterfly effect. And the butterfly effect was this. He wrote a paper about it. In the paper, it was called the predictability. That is, does the flap of a butterfly wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas? Come on. Does the flap of a butterfly wing in Brazil, Brother Sean, set off a tornado in Texas? And his theory was, according to Dr. Lorenz, is that the butterfly wing does not actually cause a tornado, but it can start a change reaction leading to a giant change in worldwide weather patterns. Let me come get you this Sunday morning. Because you see, in other words, Brother David, even a tiny insignificant movement or action that can come from a butterfly has a way of affecting millions of folk around the world. Let me say it this way. Here it is, Brother George. The Bible often describes similar butterfly effect in the spiritual life. And according to Jesus, the spiritual butterfly effect occurs 
occurs when we do small things. Butterfly effect, making a meal. Butterfly effect, taking meals out on Tuesday like our missionaries do. Butterfly effect, befriending those who are lonely. Butterfly effect, open up your home to a guest. Butterfly effect, praying for those that you like and praying for those that you don't like. Come on, help me. Butterfly, will you just type butterfly right there? Will you just flap your wings right where you are and fly like a butterfly? Oh, come on, fly like, okay, that's the wrong song. You got to fly like a butterfly because you are affecting somebody's soul. I thank God that we've come out of this so-called pandemic, get ready to go into a relaunch, and God's going to do some great things because we at CN Jenkins are not afraid to flap our wings and just touch a life right here that's going to affect somebody else around the world. Oh, 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 act of service, y'all. It, it has a way of, of Jesus giving us that context and the content of what it really means, what it really means to speak that love language. Here's the final thing, the final thing right here from the text, y'all. And I like it because it helps us see Jesus gives us a lesson on aim, aim, aim. I told you you had, you had the AAA, you had activity, awareness, and aim. Aim helps us recognize to stay focus. See, Jesus taught a valuable lesson. And through the concept of aim and focus, Jesus gives us a triangle, a three-legged stool for act of service. What are those three legs? Thank you for asking. Here they are. An act of service, again, is doing things for other people that you would like for them to do. An act of service is anything you do that helps someone you love accomplish something. And the lessons that Jesus teaches us, this three-legged stool, is to recognize hypocrisy. See, don't be like Judas, because Jesus basically is saying everybody who smiles in your face is not your friend, and everybody who doesn't look like you may not necessarily be your enemy. Jesus is saying a lesson of holiness, that is, the salvation. What did Peter say? Lord, not just wash my feet, but wash all of me. He says, no, Peter, bro, man, that's not the purpose of me washing your feet. The purpose is to show humility. The purpose is to show holiness. You have been baptized with water. Now I baptize you with the Spirit. And the last one I've said it is humility. Jesus is saying, if you're going to be my disciples, you must humble yourself put a towel on your arm and become a servant. I've come not to be served, but to serve Jesus, our model, our savior, our redeemer, our Lord. is saying, I've come to be a model of service to you. What you saying, Reverend? Here it is. And I got to give you the story, none other, of Renee Garcia. Renee Garcia is a 24-year-old mother, a wife, a mother of two preschoolers, Pastor Lansom, and a nanny for two other children. So she's really watching and raising four children. But here's Renee's story. It's not raising her children or watching somebody else's child that brings her joy. But Renee, y'all, participates in Ray Oak. Ray Oak. R-A-O-K. Ray Oak stands for Random Acts of Kindness. Renee and her husband, Aaron, y'all, once they finished their chores and their work at home, they hit the streets. They hit the pavement and do random them act of kindness. What kinds of things do they do? Miss Nicole, here's what they do. They go by the laundromat and they put a roll of quarters in the hand of somebody who's going to be blessed by this. They go to the grocery store and they pay for the groceries of people in front and behind of them. What they, they do? They give gift cards out for meals for people to give them some lunch as well as some dinner. What they, they do? They pay rent for family members. Now, the point is, I didn't say that that Renee and that and that Aaron were multi-millionaires. They're just some ordinary people, some regular folk who practice random act of kindness. Their love language, y'all, is to speak a language into somebody's heart and to make their life better. 
You see, that's what I want to just affirm in somebody today. I want to fill up your love tank and thank you for having acts of service as your love language. And if you do speak that language, I want to encourage you to keep on giving, to keep on serving, to keep on representing. If you are connected to somebody who responds to act of service, I want you to listen to this sermon, play it over again and get some nuggets that you can go and share with them. But what Whatever your love language is, I want you to know that the Bible says faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. It is love for God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus says I come not to condemn the world but to save the world. And that's our invitation this Sunday morning. If you are watching, if you are listening, and if you are seeking a relationship with the Lord, I invite you now. Somebody is here waiting to answer your call. In the chat box, uh, Reverend Lance and Dr. Carol, they are there waiting to, to respond to your whatever it is, your request and your need. Because you love us so much, God, because you care so much, God, we give our lives back to you. I want you to pray with me, if you will, right where you are. Eternal God, we thank you that you speak a love language to us. And you speak a language, God, to which we hear this morning. A language, God, that opens up our hearts to, to be a better person. A language, God, that gives us clarity in our mind to to then begin to think and focus on the right thing, a language, God, that, that, that means something to us, that, that you know, God, all of our needs. We pray, God, that some man, some woman, some boy, some girl, some individual, some family, God, on this day makes a, a decision to follow you. Eternal God, we pray that someone else is encouraged today. For they know what it means to be a servant, but it seems that the more service they give, the less response or the less gratitude they receive. So God, help us to check ourselves so that we know it's not about what people say to us, it's what they really say about you. Give us the strength, God, to keep on serving when we can and God, to be receptive of those who are giving love back to us. God, we ask that this ministry receive a special anointing to be a ministry, a church, a community of service. And God, we open up our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our hands. We open up our pocketbooks, God, that you will provide the resources and we will be good stewards and we will practice this love language of service. Thank you, God, that as we gather for worship this Sunday morning, that you will gather us in our special places and you will speak a word to our souls right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, thank you so much for being a part of this service today. Thank you for joining us uh, online. Thank you for dialing in. Whichever way that you connected, do know that we are sincere about your faith walk. And we want to be the place where you can go and grow. You've heard me say it before. There's a, I want you more than anything else. Not just to be a member of this church or anybody's church. To be a member of the body of Christ. But if you are looking for a place you can grow in the Lord. Yes, I stand here before you. Pastor Lanson, Dr. Carroll, our elders, our deacons. All of those are here waiting to receive you into this fellowship. Do know there are many ways to connect. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to this service. That way it connects you with other people. Share it. Whatever it takes for you to be an evangelist, we want you to share God's word on this Sabbath day. I want you to know I love you, care about you. Look forward to worshiping with you soon. We praise God for you. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May heaven shine upon you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this day and forevermore. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath day.